Welcome back to my channel, I'm Satnam B. Today we're going to be looking at how to create 3D text within Illustrator. To create this new 3D effect, we'll be using the inflate effect. This is part of the Adobe Illustrator 2022 update. The first thing we need to do is set up our typography. So for this, I'm going to be using quite a bold font. I've chosen Futura PT, which is available on Adobe fonts. For this style of artwork, I'm spacing the letters out a bit more than you would normally see, uh, just so that we can add a stroke and it will still be legible. Uh, we need to expand the typography to allow us to actually add the stroke to the outside edge. So if you just go to object and expand. Next, we need to fill the colors that we want to use. So for this, I'm just using a red and a black just to help us out to work out the sizing of the stroke. Once you're happy, you just need to fill the colors that you actually want to use and then expand the outlines once again so that the border will be a different object. To help us see the lighting effects with the 3D inflate, it's a good idea to add a background. Uh, just use something simple like a gradient just to help create a bit of contrast between the actual typography. So now that we've expanded the actual shapes, you can see when you ungroup them all, you can actually separate the whites from the yellow strokes. So once you're happy with your typography, what you need to do is group them all together and then apply the inflate effect, which you go to the effects menu and then click on 3D and materials and then inflate. So from here, you're greeted with this new dialog box, which contains a couple settings on how to play with the depth. For this, we're just going to use something very simple just to show you how it works. So the moment you click on inflate, you'll see your computer start processing the actual 3D depth. Um, you can change the depth settings by increasing or decreasing the value. Normally it's set to 10, but you can go as high as you need. So for this, we're going to just inflate it to about 20. You can click on the materials and you can see all these different materials from Substance Painter. For this, we're just going to use basic material and we're going to go to lighting and turn on the shadow. So you've got a few different settings here, which I'm going to try to quickly explain behind the object. So this is referring to the shadow and how it actually sits. Uh, we've got distance from object, which is how far the shadow actually is casted. And then the shadow bounds, which is sort of like a clipping mask for how far the shadows can actually reach. So if you have a quite a long shadow, you need to make sure your bounding box is quite large. Intensity is more to do with like the actual light itself, the light source, and then height will be to do with the actual light source's height and rotation. Uh, you also are greeted with ray tracing if you have a good graphics card that can support ray tracing. Uh, this will actually give you way better results and it's sort of how this effect really comes forward. Using ray tracing is probably the best way to actually achieve good 3D text within Illustrator. So you can actually change the colors and that strokes and stuff once the effect is applied. However, it can really lag out your system. So it might be an idea to actually turn off the effect, make changes and then come back to it. So for this, we just created a really simple 3D text effect, which is quite nice. Something you wouldn't be able to traditionally expect from Illustrator. It's got fairly realistic lighting and the shadows are casted quite well. But again, if you do have a graphics card, it's a good idea to try and confirm your settings beforehand and then go to ray tracing and then set your output to be like a high quality just so that you get the really crisp lines. Um, you can also change the actual light color source. So for this, we're just going to quickly just change this like a blue just to see how it works. But as you can see, it tints the whole scene, so it can be a bit dramatic. You are also able to actually change the presets of lighting, so like how it's set up. So for instance, if you need a standard, just sort of corner light, or if you wanted it to be like top left or diffused, you can have the preset settings, or you can actually build your own uh, visual styles by playing with the rotation, the height, and the softness of the shadows or of the lighting. So look, as you can see here, I'm sort of just extending the height of the shadow just so that we can see how the shadow bounds actually affects it. So it kind of like cuts it off, which is something you wouldn't necessarily want. So I'm just playing with these settings just to create something that I like. But again, where this is quite uh, labor intensive on your machine, it's a good idea to try and work out some of this stuff on a low setting and then produce it out as a high quality. So that's the first style done. So I'm going to show you a couple more variations of this effect and how you can actually use it to create really cool things. All right, so this is our second approach to actually creating some cool 3D text. So for this, we're going to go slightly differently, similar approach in terms of creating an outlined text, uh, but we're just going to create it more bubbled and have more rounded strokes. Again, for this, this is purely just stylized, just to show you how you can achieve really cool results without too much effort. So I'm just creating a gradient on these four letters. 
and then adding some circle details just to create some slightly more interesting visual cues. I guess this would be something you'd see on like maybe a club poster or maybe a sticker or something like that. So as again, with this, it's just more so playing with whatever you think looks right. So I'm just sped up my process just to try out a few different things before I confirm the visual that I want. So for this, I just decided to just have some little dots on the outside edges uh, just to allow the eye to have um, some little detail accents without having anything too contrasting to the letters. So once you're happy, all you've got to do is just group them and then we can apply the effect again. So if you just go back to the inflate menu, uh, we can just hit inflate. So this will use the same setting, like the default settings. So you can customize. Shadows are always turned off, so it's always a good idea to turn them back on. And then we can just hit ray tracing. Give it a couple of seconds, because the more objects you have, the more tasks your computer goes through. But once you're happy, you can just hit render, and then you should get something that you like. So as you can see, it sort of like froze my machine for a little bit, but it's fairly quick. So there will be some elements where things might not look right just because of the way lighting is being casted. So it normally affects smaller shapes than anything else. So you can try and fix this or you can just move the elements around. For this, I tried to move them about and tried to play with the actual lighting itself, but it just kept looking like they're being pressed into the artboard rather than sitting on top like the original sphere on the right. So as you can see, I'm just gonna move it over just to try and see how it looks. But yeah, it's the same problem because it's the actual light source that's being casted so for this, you could try and like see where it would work best if you can move it about or see if you can change the colors just to see if the lighting source will actually work. There is also a cool little feature within this because you are inflating the text and creating a sort of 3D effect, you can actually change the perspective. So you can sort of tilt it or rotate it on the X or Y axes. So you create this sort of extruded effect. So for this, I'm just gonna try and play around with some of the settings just to see if we can get those spheres at the top casted right. It's a good idea again to try and do this with the ray tracing turned off just so that your performance on your machine doesn't suffer but as you can see it's not really working on these top parts so i'm going to just try and move them about see if we can get them put in position in a slightly better place so it seems that the bottom part of this light source seems to work stronger so i'm just going to just try and grab the pink uh, hue from the a just so that we can see if we can get that uh, running through the design if you select the actual stroke it will try and mimic the stroke so it's always a good idea to make sure you've got your specific colors saved as swatches, which is something I forgot to do. So again, even when we change the colors, you can see that the outer edge is still getting hit with that harsh sort of bezeled shadow, which is not what we want. We wanted more like a smooth light sweep. So an easy fix is just to move it, to see if we can get it set up in a different area. And even just by moving it slightly down, we've got that circle that we wanted. Where this is purely up to you, you can really choose how you want the visuals to be represented. So if you want to have like different light sources, you can, but it can look a bit weird. But again, it's entirely up to you. This might be a good technique to use on something that's a bit more stylized, like graffiti logos or like Y2K graphics. When you're exporting these 3D inflated objects, it's a good idea to try the different render types. So you've got low, medium and high, and you can also change the output to be CMYK or RGB. So it just depends on your purpose. I try to go mainly with the higher quality setups just because my machine can handle it and the results are always cleaner. Here's a quick comparison of the different types. So as you can see off the bat, the low quality is sort of grainy and has this weird noisy effect. So I try to go with medium or high, depending on how long it takes really. Where this effect is straight out of the box from Illustrator, you can actually apply different effects to vector objects and have those effects be mimicked when you create the 3D overlay. Uh, so for instance, if you were to add like a distort or like a mesh bend, you can create really stylized graphics and then expand them and repeat the process of inflating them and you can create some really wacky shapes. And the cool thing is the more colors you have, you can create sort of like nice contrasting areas between like parts that blend together or parts that start to overlay. So as you can see, I've just rendered it out in like a higher quality and you can see how sort of crisp it comes out and it's still technically within the vector program. So you can scale this to be a larger size or you can actually render it out as a vector shape itself. The last thing I wanna show is how you can actually export this newly created 3D shape into an OBJ that you can use within Adobe Dimensions or Blender, whatever you use. So all it does is just exports the selected graphics as an asset and then you can export those, open up your 3D software of choice and you can just drag and drop it in. So as you can see, it does still have the same style as you originally had. So depending on how your 3D software works, it won't carry over the data for the colors, but you can create them really quickly. 
as each object is actually created as a separate mesh itself. So within Blender, all you gotta do is just import it and create new materials. So for this, I'm gonna quickly just speed it up and just run through how I build the materials and the actual render itself. So all I'm doing is just placing it around the viewport and um, adding the camera and then adding a simple HDRI background, uh, which is something that's um, quite saturated with color. And then I'm gonna be adding a slightly metallic material to a pink border and then um, a white internal. So as you can see here, we've got this really funky like bubble gum effect. And then all we've got to do is just duplicate our shader and then put that onto the letters and we're good to go. So all I did was just hit F12 to just render it out. And then I rendered it with 512 samples, which is enough to just get this um, image shown. And it looks pretty cool. Just straight off of Illustrator into Blender, add a couple little bit of materials and you're good to go. So you could add slight rotations in 3D space, or you could do um, even more cool things if you're fairly familiar with 3D software. But the cool thing is I didn't actually have to make any of this extrusion within the 3D software. It just did it automatically, understood the depths. So if you look on the side, you can see there's the pink stroke is actually slightly more recessed compared to the, the white, which is really present. Hopefully you found this tutorial useful. If you have any suggestions on videos that you would like to see, please drop a message in the comments. And again, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow. Thank you.